Okay, so 4.7 is a, a friendly section. The lecture shouldn't be too long. Um, most of the problems are pretty straightforward. Some of them I could do on my calculator. And there's some problems at the very end that I often sneak on the test that students sometimes miss. So don't like fade on me on this lecture. So it won't be that long of a lecture, but make sure to, to stick around for the last few problems in this section because those are, I put on the test frequently, problems like 36, 34, especially 34 and 36. Those kinds of problems frequently get on the test from this chapter. They're worth, you know, three or points or so, and a lot, a lot of students miss them. So um, make sure to watch those in case you, um, you, know, you start to feel good about this section and think you can do the whole thing, there are, are those tricks at the very end that you need to be, not really tricks, but there's problems at the very end that you should just be aware of. So we've done multiplying with radicals before, and in order to multiply, the indices have to be the same. If you're multiplying two cube roots, you just multiply what's under the cube root and you keep the cube root. That we've done before, so this is just kind of almost review. So the cube root of 4 times the cube root of 2 is going to be the cube root of 8. That's a cube root that I even know, but I can break out my calculator to do that as well if I don't know that. My calculator gave me a decimal when I tried to do the cube root of 8. Then I do the prime factor reducing, but it doesn't. The cube root of 8 is a perfect cube root, so this answer comes out to be just 2. And any time I solve a problem on by hand and the answer doesn't have a radical in it, I absolutely could do it on my calculator. Like for instance, I could have done this on my calculator, did cube root of 4 times cube root of 2 and still could have gotten the same answer. Um, but in general my calculator doesn't do cube roots well, but it, uh, unless the answer is a nice, doesn't have unless the answer is just an integer. If the answer would have had a radical left in it, my calculator would have failed me a bit. The next problem, my calculator absolutely can do because it's square roots, no letters. That's the kind of problem that my calculator does best. I'll do it by hand and then confirm my answer on my calculator just so I can get good at doing the problems by hand because there, there are a bunch of problems in this section that you can't rely on your calculator for. So multiplying two square roots, I multiply the numbers under the square roots. Um, 10 times 15 is 150. 150 is not a very nice square root. I don't know what it is exactly, so I'm going to reduce it by the factor tree approach. So I'm going to get the prime factoring for 150. 150, its prime factoring is 2 times 3 times 5 times 5. So when I go to write my answer, I'm not going to write the square root of 150. I'm going to reduce the square root of 150. And the prime factoring tells me I have a 5 outside the radical because there's a pair of 5s. And the single 2 and the single 3 are going to go under the radical and they're going to get multiplied back by each other. So the answer to this problem should be a 5 in front of a square root symbol times the square root of 6. 5 times the square root of 6. Having a hard time writing that for some bizarre reason. This problem, I could have mindlessly just pressed buttons because it only has square roots, doesn't have letters, if I just entered the problem just how it looks, square root of 10 times the square root of 15, I don't think my calculator is going to force me to put the time sign in. I think having the two square roots next to each other is enough for my calculator to understand multiplication. My calculator won't show me the intermediate step, but it will show me the answer when I hit enter. So I even checked myself. Problem 6, uh, it's not as nice multiplying two fifth roots. When you multiply two fifth roots, you get another fifth root. I have to multiply what's under the radicals, which is a 48x times a 10x to the eighth. And to do that multiplication, I have to multiply the like pieces. I have to multiply the 48 and the 10, and the x and the x to the eighth. 
The 48 and 10 is easy for me to multiply because multiplying by 10, you just add a zero. So before I get to my final answer, I'm going to multiply. And then I'm going to reduce after I multiply. The x's, you add the exponent. The x that didn't have an exponent written had an implied 9. Now I'm going to reduce this radical. I'm going to do a prime factoring for 480. So 480 equals shift in the quote key. So because 480 equals 2 to the fifth, 5 twos times 3 times 5, because this is a fifth root, when I reduce the fifth root of 480, I'm going to have a 2 outside the radical and a 3 and a 5 under a radical because the 3 and the 5, there weren't 5 of a kind, they stay under the radical. It would be probably intelligent to just write those as a 15, but I'm emphasizing maybe more than I need to emphasize. For the x to the 9th, I write it out as 5, 9x's. Start to form my groups of 5. I have one group of 5, so there's one x that goes under the radical, and anything that's not a group of 5 stays under the radical. So the 4x's that were left over stay under the radical. Just need to clean this up a little bit to get my answer written in the best form. The 2x to the left of the radical that's being multiplied by it, I can't clean that up. But under the radical, I can certainly multiply the 3 and the 5 and get 15. And 4x's in a row being multiplied can be written as x to the 4th. So a better answer, or the best answer, would be 2x times the 5th root of 15x to the 4th. So that's what it's worth. That's 2x times the 5th root of 15x to the 4th, just in case that 4 doesn't look like a 4. So each of the problems so far um, just had numbers outside the square roots and not under the square roots. 8's the first problem where I have numbers outside the square roots, but I don't have any adding or subtracting, so it's a pretty easy problem. In problem 8, you're going to multiply the numbers outside the square roots together and leave those numbers outside the square roots. You're going to multiply the numbers under the square roots together and leave those numbers under the square roots. So the multiplying part of this, I get 14 times the square root of 18. I'm going to do a prime factor tree to reduce the square root of 18. So I'm going to go 18 equals shift factor. So 18 equals to 2 times 3 times 3. So the square root of 18, I'm going to have a 3 in front of the radical and a 2 under. So I'm going to rewrite the square root of 18 to have a 3 to the left of the square root, a 2 under the square root. The 3 that I brought outside needs to be multiplied by the 14 that's there. And to get to the best final answer, I multiply the 14 times 3 and get 42. So for a best answer, I'm going to have a 42 to the left of the square root sign and a 2 under. This is another problem where I didn't need to do any work by hand because square roots without letters, my calculator can do that. So let me just do this to make sure I'm right. So I'm going to go parentheses, 7, shift, square root of, oops, parentheses, 7, no shift, square root of 3 without a shift, arrow out of the square root so I can get my other parentheses not under the square root, and then parentheses 2, square root of 6, close out my parentheses. So that's, that's the original problem. Hopefully I see 42 square root of 2 when I hit enter here. And I did, so I know perfectly well that my answer is okay. 10 is tougher. It has letters, it has cube roots. My calculator can't do cube roots well, it can't do letters well, but I certainly can get this answered. So for 10, I'm going to multiply the stuff outside the square roots and the stuff under the square roots together. The outside the square roots is easy multiplying. 3 times 4 is 12. The under the square roots, you have to multiply the 6 and the 12 and the x and the x squared. And it's cube root, so under the cube root. And so I'm gonna, the cube root symbol is going to stay. What I'm going to get, 6 times 12 is 72. The x's you multiply by adding their exponents, you get x to the third. 
That's multiplied, but probably not simplified. I'm going to prime factor reduce the square the cube root of 72. So I'm going to prime factor tree for 72. I'm going to go 72 equals shift, get the factoring. So 72 equals 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. That tells me I'm going to get a 2 to the left of the radical and a pair of 3's under. I'm going to write those pair of 3's as a 9 when I put them under just to save a step. So I'm going to have a 12 that's already out in front of the radical. I'm going to bring a 2 out and I'm going to leave the cube root symbol and I'm going to have a 9 under the cube root from the two 3's that are left over. Haven't dealt with the x cubed yet. The x cubed for its reduction, if I expand the x cubed into three x's, that allows me to have one x to the left of the radical, because I have three of a kind, and anytime I have three of a kind, I get one of those out front. There's nothing after my three of a kind, so there's no x's to put under my radical. So I almost have an answer that's perfect. I just have to multiply the 12 and that 2 to get my 24. So the answer for this problem is going to be 24x times the cube root of 9. Twelve is the first problem where I see um, a, a subtraction sign. And in 12, there's actually two multiplications that need to be done. The square root of 14 that's outside the parentheses needs to be multiplied by both terms in the parentheses. The nice thing about problem 12 is there's only square roots, there's no letters. I could just mindlessly press buttons on my calculator to get the answer. But I'll do it by hand and then I'll check. So the first multiplication I need to do is the square root of 14 times the square root of 7. The second multiplication I need to do is the square root of 14 times negative 2. For the square root of 14 times square root of 7, you have to multiply the 14 and the 7. And 14 times 7 is 98. So this multiplication, I get the square root of 98. The second multiplication, I'm multiplying a positive times a negative, so I, I should get a negative. It would be wrong for me to get a 28 in my answer. I can't multiply a number outside a square root with a number under a square root. So I don't really multiply these together. I just kind of show that they need to be multiplied by writing the 2 to the left of the square root. This shows that I'm multiplying, but I'm not doing anything illegal. I don't think the square root of 14 is reducible because if you look at the prime factoring for 14, it doesn't have any pairs. But the square root of 98 probably is reducible, so I'm going to try to reduce it. So I'm going to go 98 equals shift factor it. 98 is 2 times 7 times 7. So for the square root of 98, I'm going to get a 7 to the left of my radical and a 2 under. And that's going to take me to 7 square root of 2 minus 2 square root of 14. You can't get a 5. You can't subtract the 7 and the 2 to get a 5. The only time you could subtract with radicals if they have exactly the same things under the radical. So either both would have to have a 14 under the radical or both would have a 2 under the radical for these to or you'd be able to subtract the 7 and 2 and get a 5. I've simplified the radicals as best I can, and those can't be subtracted, so I think this is going to be the answer. A lot of times when I do my work on my calculator, it gives me the answer backwards. So there's a reasonable chance that when I do my calculator to check that it gives me this for an answer. That's, I consider that the same because it has the same pieces with kind of the same signs. The 7 didn't have a sign in my answer, but if I wrote it second, it deserves a sign, and it would need a plus sign. So let me do the original problem on my calculator to make sure my answer is OK. So I'm going to do square root of 14, get out of the square root, do my parentheses, then square root of 7 minus 2. So that looks enough like the original problem that I'm going to believe what it gives me. And see, it did. It gave me negative 2 square root of 14 plus 7 square root of 2. I'm not sure why the programmer programmed this calculator the way it does, did, but so often when I'm simplifying and there's two pieces in my simplification answer, it does them backwards from how the algebra would do them. And I just, there, there must be an, an algorithm 
for how it decides which of the square roots to put first, but um, both answers would be okay. There isn't one that I like this one better because the negative second, but the programmer of this calculator doesn't like that. So I would take either one of these for an answer. 14, my calculator would let me down if I tried to do it because of the cubed root. So I'm going to do the multiplications that I need to do. There's two of them. I need to multiply 5 cube root of 4 times the cube root of 2. And I need to multiply 5 cube root of 4 times negative 7 cube root of 12. So I need to do the two multiplications that are implied. The minus sign in the parentheses forces me to multiply the term outside the parentheses by separately by each. The first multiplication, I can only multiply the 4 and the 2 because those are both under the radical. So the first multiplication is going to give me 5 times the cube root of 8. The second multiplication, I'm first going to multiply the 5 and the negative 7 and get a minus sign with a 35. And then I'm going to multiply the 4 and the 12. And 4 times 12 I can do without my calculator, I hope. I get 48. Now I'm going to attempt to reduce each of the radicals. The cube root of 8 is a perfect one. It's a 2. But if I didn't know that, I could do a prime factoring for 8. Because 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. The cube root of 8 is going to reduce. There's going to be a 2 outside the radical. Nothing left for under the radical, so it just turns into a 2. And you could have just done cube root of 8 on your calculator and found out the cube root of 8 is 2. So this first piece comes out to be 5 times 2, which is 10. The second piece, I need to reduce the cube root of 48. So I'm going to work on that 48. So I'm going to go 48 equals shift factor it. So it's 2 to the 4th times 3. So 48 is 1, 2, 3, 4 twos times 3. When I reduce the cube root of 48, I'm going to get a 2 outside the radical that's going to be multiplied by the 35. So I'm going to get minus 35 times 2. And under the radical, I get a 2 times 3. And I'd probably just write that as 6 rather than showing the 2 times 3. I'm almost done. I'm going to multiply the 35 and 2 and get a 70. And this is as far as I can go. I, it would be wrong to write a negative 60 in my answer. I can't subtract a piece that doesn't have a cube root of 6 to a piece that has a cube root of 6. When we're adding and subtracting with radicals, the only time you can add or subtract is if both pieces has the, have the same radical. So that's as far as I can go for 14. 16 is a foiling problem, as well as 17. I don't know why I left 17 there. 18 is a... I'm not going to do 17. Um, 18 is a foiling problem. 20 is a foiling problem. 22 is a foiling problem. So I've got a three or four foiling problems in a row. 16 is nice because I can know what the answer is. Let me cheat and just do it on my calculator for a second. So there's square roots, no letters. So 4 minus 2 square root of 6 times 3 plus 5 square root of 6. When I'm presented with a problem that has only square roots, doesn't have letters, if I can enter it the way it looks, I can know what the answer is. So my answer, according to my calculator, is going to be negative 48 plus 14 square root of 6. That makes me think when I do it by hand, I'm going to get 14 square root of 6 minus 48. But um, they're both equally correct. So um, you can definitely switch the order. If I switched the order, if the 14 was written first, it wouldn't need a sign, but the 48 would need a minus sign. So one of these, they're both equivalently correct. By hand, I have to FOIL, because each parenthesis has a sign. The first is going to be 4 times 3. The outers are going to be 4 times 5 square root of 6. The inners are going to be minus 2 square root of 6 times 3. And the last are going to be minus 2 square root of 6 times 5 square root of 6. So first, 4 times 3 is 12. Outers are both positive, so I get a plus sign. 
The only thing I'm allowed to multiply is the 4 and the 5, so that's going to give me a 20 square root of 6. The inner is positive times a negative, so I get a negative. The only thing I'm allowed to multiply are the 3 and the 2. I'm going to get a 6 square root of 6. And the lasts, I multiply the negative 2 and the positive 5 and get a negative 10. And I also multiply the 6 and the 6 and get a 36 under my radical. When I look at the radicals, the 6's aren't reducible. If I look at the prime factoring for 6, it's just 2 times 3. There's no pair, so those don't reduce. And the square root of 36, I don't need my calculator. I know that that's 6. I don't need prime factoring. So I'm going to change this last piece to 10 times 6. So I'm going to get 12 plus 20 square root of 6 minus 6 square root of 6 minus 60. The things I need to combine are the 12 minus 60 and the plus 20 square root of 6 minus 6 square root of 6. The 12 minus 60 gives me a minus 48. You could do it on your calculator if you can't do it in your head. And for this second piece that I'm going to combine, I'm just going to combine the 20 and the 6. 20 minus 6 is 14. And when you're adding or subtracting, the letter parts have to be the same. If they are the same, they don't change. So actually, I'm getting my calculator answer, not, not the reverse of it. So negative 48 plus 14 square root of 6 is a perfect answer. 18 is a messy, long foiling problem, but I can certainly do it on my calculator because square roots only, no letters. So let me try that. Not 9 square root of 2 plus square root of 6 times 3 square root of 2 minus 4 square root of 6. So when I do that, I get an answer of 30 minus 66 square root of 3. So I'm going to try to get that by hand. It's nice to be able to check things on my calculator, but if you just get completely reliant on your calculator, you'll mess up when you have letters or when you have something other than square roots. So, foiling this first is 9 square root of 2 times 3 square root of 2. Outers are 9 square root of 2 times minus 4 square root of 6. Inners are square root of 6 times 3 square root of 2. Lasts, square root of 6 times minus 4 square root of 6. So, first, 9 times 3 and 2 times 2. I multiply outsides, square roots by outsides, unders by unders. I get 27 square root of 4. Outers, I multiply the 9 and the negative 4 outside the square roots and get a negative 36. I multiply the 2 and the 6 under the square roots and get a 12. Inners, nothing but positive, so I get a plus sign. The only thing I could multiply are the 6 and the 2. I'm gonna, that's going to turn into a 12 under my radical. The 3 that's outside the radical needs to stay outside. It had nothing to multiply by, so it just stays there. The lasts, I only can multiply the two sixes and get a square root of 36. The minus four is just going to hang around. It has nothing to multiply by, but it can't go away. Two of the square roots are easy for me. I don't need factor trees for. The first one, the four, has a square root of two. The last one, the 36, has the square root of 6. So those are square roots that I just don't need factor trees for. The 12 I do, though. Because 12 is 2 times 2 times 3, I'm going to, for the, each of the square roots of 12, get a 2 in front of a radical and a 3 under. So for both the square roots of 12, the first one had a 36 in front. I'm going to put a 2 in front and a 3 under for that square root of 12. Similarly, the second one that had a 3 in front, I'm going to bring a 2 outside and leave a 3 under. I'm getting closer to my calculator's answer. I have 27 times 2, which is a 54. 36 times 2 is a minus 72 square root of 3. 
3 times 2 gives me a 6 square root of 3, and minus 4 times 6 gives me minus 24. So to get from this step to my calculator answer, I have to do 54 minus 20, and minus 72 square root of 3, plus 6 square root of 3. The 54 minus 20 is going to give me the 30 part, and the next part is going to give me the minus 66 square root of 3, because I'm going to go minus 72 plus 6, and the square root of 3 part won't change. So the number part is minus 72 plus 6, and that's minus 66. So there's the minus 66, and the square root of 3, when you're adding the square roots, don't, don't go away. They just stay the same. Next problem, I'm kind of bound to my calculator. Uh, I'm not bound to my calculator. It's not going to help me. So I'm going to FOIL again. So I'm going to do first 3 times 5 outers, 3 times minus square root of x, inners, 2 square root of x times 5, lasts, 2 square root of x times negative square root of x. First are the easiest. 3 times 5 is just 15. Outers, I'm multiplying a positive by a negative, so I get a negative. And I can't get the 3 under the radical. You can't multiply something under a radical with something outside a radical. So I'm just going to write that as 3 square root of x. The inners are both positive, so I'm going to write a positive. And I'm allowed to multiply the 5 and the 2 because they're both outside the radical. I'm going to get a 10 square root of x. The lasts, if I'm thinking about the lasts, that second radical really is minus 1 square root of x. So I'm multiplying 2 times minus 1 and getting a minus 2 for outside the radical. And under the radicals, I'm multiplying it x times x and getting x squared. So in terms of reducing, the first two radicals don't have any pairs. They're not reducible because you need at least a pair and there's only a single x. The last radical, because x squared is x times x, I'm going to get an x outside the radical and no radical left over because there's nothing after my pair. So if I break this down, I get 15 minus 3 square root of x plus 10 square root of x minus 2x. The only pieces that are considered like terms that can be combined at this point are these because they have the same variable structure. They both have x's under the square root. I can't combine the 15 with any of the things with the x's by adding or subtracting. And the 2x could only be added or subtracted to another term that just had an x outside a radical. So those things that I boxed are the only things that can be combined. When you combine them, you just make the negative 3 and the plus 10 into whatever that combines to be, that combines to be negative, it comes, combines to be positive 7. So for an answer, I'm going to have three pieces. The 15, these two pieces combine to be a plus 7 square root of x, and that piece is a minus 2x. You can write them in any order. If you wanted to have it like this, that's okay. Just as long as you have these three pieces, the order is kind of irrelevant. There isn't one order that's significantly better than another, so I just kind of left it in the order that the algebra just kind of pushed on me. 22 is another foiling problem. It's a little bit tougher because it has cube roots. It's not ridiculous. So I'm going to do first cube root of x times cube root of x, outers cube root of x times negative 8, inners, positive 7 times cube root of x, lasts 7 times negative 8. When I do the firsts, I'm going to multiply the x's. You multiply the x's by adding their exponents. x times x is going to be x squared. Both those x's are under the radical, so when I multiply them, they're going to stay under the radical. The outers, you can't multiply something outside a radical with something under a radical, so I'm just going to leave the 8 and the cube root of x written next to each other, but I'm not going to combine them. Similarly, for the inners, I can't really multiply. I need a sign. They're both positive, so I'm going to put a plus sign, and I get a 7 cube root of x. 
the last positive times negative is a negative. 7 times 8 is 56. If I go to reduce, this radical only has two x's under it. And in a cube root, you need three x's for it to be simplifiable. So that radical is not simplifiable, nor are those two radicals, because I don't have a three of a kind. So none of the radicals can be reduced. But these two radicals can be combined by combining the negative 8 and the plus 7. And negative 8 plus 7 is equal to negative 1. So when I go to simplify, the only things that can be combined are the terms that I boxed. The other two pieces, the cube root of x squared, because it doesn't have exactly the same thing under the radical, it can't be combined with the things that I boxed. 56 doesn't even have an x in it, so I'm not worried about combining it. For an answer, you, you have flexibility. The order is not terribly important. And whether you show the negative 1 or if you just put the minus sign, it's OK. So th these are both correct answers. I'd probably write the bottom one, because I usually don't write ones when they're not necessary. But it's completely OK if you have that one. The next couple problems are not super pleasant, but calculator-wise, not unpleasant for 24. Uh, 24 and 26, uh, the probability of those being on the test are just about zero. So if you skipped watching these, it's not the end of, you know, if you're pressed for time, it's not such a big deal. I'm going to do 24 on my calculator first because it's a lovely problem with only square roots, no letters. So I can do it on my calculator. Right. I believe I've entered it perfectly. So, f oh, it blew my calculator's mind. I'm my calculator. First, I'm very surprised that it just failed me. I don't want a decimal answer, so this is too complex for my calculator. It was only programmed to handle basic square root problems. I didn't even realize it couldn't do this problem. So my calculator failed me. So I, I have to do the algebra. That's too bad. Algebra, there's a bunch of multiplications I need to do. I need to take this 2, multiply it by each term in the right parentheses. So I'm going to go 2 times square root of 2, and 2 times square root of 5, and 2 times 7. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the 3 square root of 10. Multiply it by each thing in the right parentheses. So I'm going to go 3 square root of 10 times square root of 2, 3 square root of 10 times square root of 5, and 3 square root of 10 times 7. So there's six multiplications I have to do for that problem, and maybe that's just too much for my calculator. The nice thing is there's no minus signs, there's no x's, so it shouldn't be that hard. First multiplication, I'm just going to leave that as 2 square root of 2. Second multiplication, I'm going to write plus 2 square root of 5. Third multiplication, I'm going to write plus 14. Fourth is the first time that I have some radicals I could multiply. Fourth one, I'm going to get 3 square root of 20. Fifth multiplication, I'm going to get 3 square root of 50. And the last multiplication, 21 square root of 10, because I could only multiply unders with unders, outsides with outsides, so I was real consistent about how I did my multiplication. Now I look at the numbers under the radical. The 2 and the 5 are prime. Those radicals aren't going to reduce. The 20 is not prime, so that's a potentially reducible. For 20, because 20 equals to 2 times 2 times 5, that radical can be written as 3 times 2 square root of 5. And ultimately, I'm going to write that as 6 square root of 5. So I'm going to leave the 2 square root of 2 alone for a while, the 2 square root of 5 alone for a while, the 14. And then this radical reduces to plus 6 square root of 5. I'll do the same for the 50. The 50. Its prime factoring is 2 times 5 times 5. So for the 50, I'm going to get a 5 out front and a 2 under my radical. 
because there's a pair of fives. I should get one of those out front. There was already a three out five, so I'm going to multiply the three and the five and get 15 and leave the square root of two. The last one that has a 10, 10 is just two times five. There's no pairs there. So that last one's just going to stay 21 square root of 10. Now I'm going to combine the things that can be combined. So what can be combined is a 2 square root of 2 plus a 15 square root of 2, a 2 square root of 5 plus 6 square root of 5. Those can be combined. The plus 14 can't be combined with anything in this list because there aren't any numbers without square roots. And the plus 21 square root of 10 can't be combined with anything in this list because in order to add something with, with a square root of 10, I have to have another thing with a square root of 10. So my answer is going to have four pieces. The first piece I'm going to write down is 17 square root of 2. I've added the 2 and the 5 here. The second piece I'm going to have is 8 square root of 5. And then the last two pieces, 14 and 21 square root of 10, they're part of my answer, but they didn't change by being added to anything. And there's absolutely no reason you couldn't write these four terms in a different order. If you didn't like the 14 being written third and you felt like it needed to be written first, that's fine. Um, again, 24 and 26, the probability of those making it on the test is pretty close to zero. Well, I'll go ahead and do them anyways. 26 is much, much, much more unpleasant. So 26, six multiplications. First multiplication, 4 times x. Second multiplication, 4 times negative 2 square root of x. Third multiplication, 4 times 1. Fourth multiplication, 2 square root of x times x. Fifth multiplication, 2 square root of x times negative 2 square root of x. And the last multiplication, 2 square root of x times 1. All right, now I need to do the multiplications. There's six of them there. First multiplication, I'm just going to leave the 4 and the x like next to each other. Second multiplication, I'm going to multiply the 4 and the negative 2 and get negative 8 square root of x. Third multiplication, 4 times 1, I'm just going to write a plus 4. Fourth multiplication, there's no negative sign, so I get a positive sign. It would be wrong to get an x squared. You can't multiply an x outside a radical with an x under a radical. So that x, I'm just going to kind of write in line to the left of the square root, but I shouldn't get an x squared there. Second to last multiplication, I multiply the 2 in the negative 2 and get a negative 4. I multiply the x's under the radical and get an x squared under my radical. Last multiplication is easy because anything times 1 is itself. The only radical that reduces is this one because here I have a single x, there I have a single x, I need a pair. For this radical, you have two x's, so you're going to get an x outside the radical. and nothing left under the radical. So I, from this line to this line, the only thing I change is this piece. I change it to a 4x. Now I'm going to combine the terms that can be combined. So this and this, this 4x minus that 4x can be combined. And this minus 8 square root of x plus that 2 square root of x can be combined. The other terms, the plus 4, there's no term that doesn't have an x. That can't be combined with anything. And the 2x square root of x, there's no other term that has an x both outside and under a radical. So those two terms are just going to be part of my answer. They're not going to be combined with anything else. The 4x's cancel. And for these two pieces, I combine the negative 8 and the plus 2. And the negative 8 and the plus 2 give me a minus 6. I'm left with the square root of x when you subtract those. Still have the 4, still have the 2x square root of x. That's my answer for 26. All right, next group of problems are definitely test worthy. They're called special products because 
they can be done with shortcuts. Um, the first problem here doesn't have any letters, only has square roots, means I can do it on my calculator. So I'm going to do 3 plus square root of 6 times 3 minus square root of 6. The answer is going to be moderately surprising. It's just the number 3. This is c considered a special problem because I, because the outer denominators are going to cancel. I call these parentheses conjugate pairs, meaning they're the same except one has a plus sign and one has a minus sign. And for conjugate pairs, when you FOIL, the outers and inners will cancel. And it's technically only necessary to do the first and the last, but I'm going to do regular foiling. Um, if you're clever when you're doing this, you just do the first and the last, but I won't be clever. I'm going to foil this. I'm going to go first, or 3 times 3. Outers are 3 times minus square root of 6. Inners are square root of 6 times 3. Lasts are square root of 6 times minus square root of 6. So the clever student would only do the first and the last because in conjugate pairs, the outers and the inners are going to cancel. But I don't need to, I don't, I just usually don't even think that. And I just foil it out. It takes me two minutes longer, but I'm not cluttering my head with something else that, that might confuse me. So First, are easy multiplying. 3 times 3 is 9. Outers positive times a negative, I get a negative. I can't multiply the 3 and the 6 and get an 18 because you can't multiply something outside a square root with something under a square root. The inners, both positive, so I get a plus sign. Again, I shouldn't get an 18. I'll just leave the 3 and the 6 next to each other. The last, positive times a negative, I get a negative. It's okay, and I should multiply the 6s because they're both under a radical. You can multiply those. Just like I predicted, the outers and the inners are opposites. These are going to cancel. That's why I didn't have to do them. I only really had to do the first and the last when you have conjugate pairs. So let me get to that 3. My first are 9. My last are minus square root of 36. And that square root of 36 I could write as a 6. So I get my 9 minus 6, and there's where the 3 comes from. So this whole thing reduces to 9 minus 6, and the answer is 3. 30 is another conjugate pair. 30 has a letter in it, so it makes it so my calculator won't work to get the answer. Technically, I can skip doing the outers and inners because they will cancel because these are conjugate pairs. I'm not going to skip them, but I will, if you were wanted to, you could skip them because when you're multiplying conjugate pairs, same contents of the parentheses but different signs, when you foil, the outers and the inners will cancel. But I'm going to do full foiling. So first, outers, inners, lasts So as I go to get my answer the first y times y are just y squared the outers they're both positive so I get a plus sign I can't multiply a letter outside a radical with a letter under a radical so I just leave that written next to the radical inners and positive times a negative I get a negative Similarly, I can't multiply a y outside a radical by a 2x under a radical, so I just leave them next to each other. In the last, positive times a negative is a negative. I'm going to multiply the 2x's together. And when I multiply 2x times 2x, I get 4x squared. So there's my foiling. As I predicted, these will cancel because they're opposites. So in my answer, I'm left with a y squared minus the square root of 4x squared. If I do this, to simplify that radical, the square root of 4, I don't need uh, any special 
tree to know I know that's 2. And if, if I look at the x squared, it simplifies to an x outside the radical and nothing under the radical. This is a perfect square. In fact, anytime you multiply two identical square roots, you could skip the multiplying and write what's under one of the square roots without the square root. So the square root of 2x times the square root of 2x is just going to equal to 2x. So for an answer, my first part of my answer is y squared. The second part is minus 2x. That doesn't factor, nor can I simplify that. 32 is another conjugate pair, and it's a friendly conjugate pair because no letters. So let me try to do this. Square root of 6 plus square root of 3 times square root of 6 minus square root of 3. So the answer is supposed to be 3 again. Hmm. Let's see if I can get there. So I'm going to FOIL, technically because these are conjugate pairs, two identical parentheses, one with a plus, one with a minus. I don't have to FOIL, could just do first and last. But it's not wrong to FOIL, so I'm going to do FOILing. Square root of 6 times the square root of 6 for my first. Outers, square root of 6 times minus square root of 3. Inners, square root of 3 times square root of 6 lasts square root of 3 times minus square root of 3. So as I go to do the foiling, first the 6s are under the radical. I'm going to multiply them and leave them under the radical. I could. Square root of 6 times the square root of 6 is just going to equal to 6. Anytime you multiply two identical square roots, you can skip the step of multiplying and reducing. Anytime you multiply two identical square roots, it's going to eventually simplify to what's under one of the square roots without the radical because the square root of 36 is 6. Outers times the outers, positive times the negative, I get a negative. The 6 and the 3 are both under the radical, so I'm going to multiply those to get an 18. The inners are both positive. I'm going to multiply the 3 and the 6, leave them under the radical, and get an 18. These are going to cancel because they're opposites. And when you're multiplying conjugate pairs, the outers and the inners always cancel. The last positive times the negative is a negative. I'm multiplying and there's two identical numbers under the square root. I could skip that step. And anytime you multiply and there's two identical numbers under the square root, you can go straight to the result. The result is going to be what's under one of the square roots without the square root sign. Or I could multiply the square root of 9, the square root of 9 is 3. And then 6 minus 3 gives me the answer of 3. Those problems aren't the tricky problems. The last two problems I'm going to do are what I would call the tricky problems. And 34 is nicer than 36 because I use my calculator. So I'm going to use my calculator and then I'll show you how to get it by hand. So 2 minus square root of 7 squared equals 2. 11 minus 4 square root of 7 needs to be my answer. If you're working ahead of me and you did this and you didn't use your calculator, if you didn't FOIL, you have the wrong answer. So to get from the problem to this answer, I'm going to write the problem without its exponent. Without its exponent, then you can see it's a FOILing problem. When you're asked to square something, you're asked to multiply that by itself. So 2 minus square root of 7 squared means 2 minus square root of 7 times 2 minus square root of 7. This is a foiling problem, and they're not conjugates. The outers and the inners are not going to cancel. So when I go to do this, it's a foiling problem, even though it didn't look like one from the beginning. I do firsts, outers, inners, lasts, so the first I multiply it 2 times 2 and get a 4, the outers I'm multiplying a positive times a negative so I get a negative, 
I can't get a 14. I can't multiply a number outside a square root with a number under a square root, so I just leave the 2 and the 7 next to each other. Same thing with the inners. I'm multiplying a positive times a negative, and I get a negative. I can't multiply a number outside a square root with a number under the square root, so I leave the 2 and the 7 next to each other. The last, I'm multiplying two negatives, so I get a positive. Anytime you're multiplying two identical square roots, you can write what's under one of the square roots without the square root symbol. So rather than multiplying the 7th and getting 49 and then doing the square root of 49 is 7, anytime I'm multiplying two identical square roots, I could write what's just under one of the square roots without the square root symbol. I'm almost ready to get my answer. Now I need to combine the like terms. I have the 4 plus 7 and the minus 2 square root of 7 minus 2 square root of 7. The 4 plus 7 gives me the 11 part of the answer, and these give me the minus 4 square root of 7. Because the signs are the same, they don't cancel, I add the 2's and keep them negative. Alright, one more problem that doesn't look like a foiling problem that is a foiling problem. Almost guaranteed that you'll see something like 34 or 36 on your test, because I almost put one on every semester. 36 is much less pleasant than 34 because of the x. So I'm going to write this without the exponent. So this really means 4 plus 5 square root of x times 4 plus 5 square root of x. It's a foiling problem. So I'm going to go firsts are 4 times 4. Outers are 4 times 5 square root of x. Inners are 5 square root of x times 4, last 5 square root of x times 5 square root of x. First come out to be 16. Outers, I multiply the 4 and 5 and get a 20. They're positive, so I put a positive 20 along with my square root of x. The inners, I multiply the 5 and the 4 and get 20. I leave that square root of x. The lasts are both positive. I multiply the 5's, leave them in front of the radical. 5 times 5 is 25. I multiply the x's and get an x squared. The square root of x squared turns into an x, nothing under the radical. So this last piece I can write as 25x. The outers and the inners, those can be added. The square root doesn't reduce because there isn't any pairs, but I can add the 20's and get a 40 square root of x, that's just adding the two 20s, and the 16 up front needs to be part of my answer, but it can't be added to a term with an x. So I have three pieces, a 16, a 40 square root of x, and a 25x for my answer, and you can write those in any order that you desire to write those in. There isn't a right or wrong order, um, and I just kind of wrote them in the order that the foiling came, gave to me. So. The last two sections were supposed to be you know, friendly-ish, as will tomorrow's, or the section 4.8. It'll, it'll be also be a friendly-ish section, and m most everything in this section, probably about 70% of the problems, I'll be, oh, well, let's, let's say 50% of the problems I'll be able to do on my calculator. So definitely you know, have these handy, and you'll, again, appreciate this calculator when we do that section. All right, that's got to be enough.